Other kinds of additives are one is called friction modifier. In this case, we mix mineral oil or replace mineral oil by polyglycol. Some organic fatty acids and amines, they work as uh, low friction material. So different uh, polymer, polymeric molecules may have different uh, lubricity or different amount of uh, friction. So this is the inherent property of the uh, material or of the liquid to give low friction. So <clears throat> if the oil is of low friction then it, it will help in the boundary lubrication uh, regime and they do form adsorbed layer which is the boundary layer. Nowadays we also see many research going on about some nanoparticles. So nanoparticles like MOS2 um, or <clears throat> even PTFE, PTFE particles are dispersed inside the oil and when it is homogeneously dispersed these particles will help to reduce friction. So these are some new types of um, solutions for as friction modifiers. Then viscosity index improvers. So as I uh, said before that higher the viscosity index the better because that kind of oil will be less sensitive to temperature change. So long um, chain molecules are used as viscosity index improver. So these polymethacrylates, polyisobutylene, PIB, <coughs> olefin copolymers and so on. So these uh, polymers are added as viscosity index improvers. Then pore point depressant. So that means uh, we want low low pore point so that pore point is defined as the temperature um, <clears throat> the lowest temperature at which the lubricant will still flow so basically for cold countries cold environment we need low pore point so pore point depressant is added these molecules to help the lubricating oil to remain fluid, remain fluid even at very very low temperature. <clears throat> now another type of additives are detergents and dispersants. So these are added so that all the, uh, the additives as well as the byproducts of oxidation, they remain in the solution state, they do not become deposits because if they become deposit on a metal surface, it will have much uh, bigger problem. So, so these detergents are added, metallo-organic compounds of barium, calcium, magnesium and so on, so that uh, the additives and the byproducts, they remain in the solution form and dispersants are also used to disperse them equally. So, um, last uh, lecture I showed you that used engine oil and even though I have been keeping that engine oil for almost a year but it doesn't settle down that means it is well mixed inside all the oxidation products are well mixed so another requirement for uh, lubricating oil is ashless or low ash That means when the oxidation takes place or if they uh, almost burn, then how much ash is left? So the low, lower the amount of ash, the better. Okay? So that you do not need so much of detergent and dispersants. Sometimes also you will hear ashless. So these are the new requirements of uh, the lubricating oils. Now when we add detergent, there will be foam formation. So we need foam inhibitors. So silicon polymers and organic copolymers. So 
foam is basically air bubble the air bubble will form okay so if the air bubble forms on two surfaces or two surfaces which are indicate uh, interacting with each other so that means these forms basically um, are the spots where there is no lubricant there is a air bubble so therefore the lubrication efficiency of the uh, the lubricant will reduce if the foam is formed so therefore we need foam inhibitors to help to remove the foams as much as possible or remove the air bubbles and another thing is in the air bubbles will also increase the rate of oxidation oxidation will increase if there are air bubbles so therefore it is important that these air bubbles are removed from the oil as soon as possible so these are the main um, additives in uh, any lubricant that we use and without these uh, additives we cannot use the lubricants so we cannot use the base oil as it is so this we have talked about the mineral oils and synthetic oils are slightly different from mineral oils that synthetic oils have been manufactured by polymerization process and they have lots of advantages for example they are used for high temperature application as well as for low temperature application uh, low in flammability or almost uh, fire resistant um, compatibility with materials such as natural rubber so some of the mineral oils may not be compatible with natural rubber and contamination issue so they they are um, they have very little contamination so in some cases application in food and agricultural products you can use synthetic oils drawbacks most of the synthetic oils are not good boundary lubricants so this is one problem with the synthetic lubricants they are not as good as mineral oils and they have low lubricity so that means again these synthetic oils will require additives different types of additives to make them better in terms of boundary lubrication and lubricity so there are two types of synthetic um, oils one is called synthetic hydrocarbons so polyalpha olefin PO with proper additives so PAO is the synthetic oil which is also hydrocarbon so this, this is same as paraffin in terms of structure but they have been processed by uh, polymerization process and the second one are diesters and polyol esters so these are used uh, again another synthetic oils and they are more expensive they are mostly used for high temperature application high temperature and uh, um, applications like aircraft application they are also used in high temperature greases and in engine oils other high temperature application is hot rolling oils in steel rolling so these are for diesters and the next one is polyol esters which are comp complex esters these are also esters and uh, they are primarily used for aircrafts so the aircraft engine aircraft lubricating oils are all uh, esters or polyol esters and they are very very expensive as well as they can be used in other metal processing um, processing equipments for example one is continuous casting machine so in continuous casting actually uh, molten metal is poured through a hopper like this these are all made of ceramic and then the molten metal comes here and it exits uh, in the solid form so you can form a metal billets continuously so it, it is a continuous process so it can keep going on and on this process and you form a um, casting from the liquid directly so this saves uh, the foundry uh, costs because if you want to cast these steels then you will have to do a lot 
to do the casting but in continuous casting there is no need for those things those costs and it can be continuously made but since these molten metals will come in contact with these uh, ceramic molds here they will stick to each other and as it solidifies it it will just clog it will just solidify here it will not be a continuous casting so therefore you need a lubricant here lubricant is added and there is a special kind of reciprocation motion that takes place and that helps to that helps so that the metal will not stick to the mold here and this liquid metal will continuously become solid uh, in the form of solid billets like a square cross section billets have you seen a continuous casting machine no sir but i study in manufacturing process okay so and watching sir this video in youtube uh -huh. so um, if you go to a steel plant especially alloy steel plants um, most of the steel plants will have this continuous casting so sir uh, how this lubrication happens sir because metal uh, continuous uh, uh, coming and going so yes so, so a basically uh, i have seen, I worked in a steel plant and i i worked in the continuous casting process as well so i so basically there is a um, um, some place here where the the metal will be poured from the ladle okay. and this part will convert into this kind of shape all made of ceramic and as the temperature goes down uh, ceramic will be changed to metals so and here uh, a, a worker or somebody con continuously pours the lubricant so lubricant as soon as it goes passes through the lubricant is poured here and here there will be a movement uh, oscillation movement so that the molten metal doesn't solidify and clog the passage so it will continuously move and that is how it will and the lubricant will go because of this movement so lubricant will continuously lubricate and as it is coming out all the way up to here and then it becomes open so sir we arrange the roller now yes yes so it starts like a vertical <clears throat> and then it is turn like this because the at this point metal is still soft so metal can bend and here there are many rollers and it is also so cooling then no? cooling yes energy. yeah there, after this there will be a water cooling so water water will be used as coolant and these rollers will basically bend the, the billet which is still soft and very high temperature it is still uh, temperature can be around for example 1200 or 1300 degrees celsius uh, but here it was molten at this spot it was molten and as it is entering it is cooling down slowly and the lubricant is being poured from both sides and uh, here it will be air cooled but very soon it will be uh, water cooled so um, and then it will go into the rollers here continuously so there is no stoppage one full big ladle of steel can be emptied here slowly it takes lot lot of time so slowly it will be emptied here and slowly it becomes all uh, billet so this is called continuous casting so here i have just uh, shown you the molecules of diesters and polyolesters so you can see these are very very complex uh, molecules um, again we don't have to remember but i think at least we should know um, what are these molecules other types of uh, synthetic oils are one again tricrisyl phosphate or tcp this can also be used as a synthetic oils um, tcp 
TCP also acts as a solvent for many paints and plastics and rubbers and TCP has the uh, dis disadvantage of poor thermal stability when in contact with metals. So although they are good for high temperature application but they have uh, poor stability when metals are there. So these are also esters, phosphate esters. ZDTP, as I talked about, ZDTP is also used as additives as well as, as synthetic oil. Then silicon. So silicons are uh, another class of liquids or materials which can be used for as a lubricants and they are polysiloxanes. And they can be found in different uh, viscosities. So for example, uh, viscosity close to let's say uh, normal kinds of fuel oils like kerosene oil or it can be very very thick so you can get silicon oil for of any viscosity you like and <clears throat> here basically we have got this silicon combined with oxygens so all these molecules and plus we have got some CH3 groups here so this is used as a general um, formula. So uh, again, we should know what are these formula, but uh, we don't have to remember um, exact uh, crystal structure or exact uh, molecular structure or name, but we should know that these are the silicons. Then polyglycols. So polyalkylene glycols, binding ethylene oxide and propylene oxide bonded with alcohol or water. So these are also used as lubricants, synthetic lubricants. Then fl fluorinated ethers or fluorocarbons. So this is another very important class of um, lubricants and especially I would like to say about PFP or poly perfluoropolyether. This is extremely stable um, high temperature stable um, lubricant and this is quite lubricious as well so it has very very good lubrication property this is used PFP is used in greases for high temperature application as well as for high vacuum application they are chemically very resistant because of the fluorine so all uh, compounds which has got fluorine are very chemically very stable and they are extreme, extensively used in magnetic hard disks. So the computer hard disk that we, we have in our each computer is lubricated with this mag PFP, a very, very thin layer of PFP. Of course, it has also DLC layer topped with PFP. PFP is used in many applications, including uh, the aircraft application and other application as well as in space application so very very useful lubricant is PFP so again uh, if we talk about additives for synthetic oils again they are very uh, similar kind of things that we have studied for mineral oil so here I've got some list of different types of oils and their important properties so whenever you see these lubricating oils like SAE it will come like this 20W and sometimes there is another number after this for example here 5W30 so this basically um, indicates the temperature so this is uh, W stands for winter this stands for temperature and also this stands for temperature the high temperature side low temperature side so ATW means it can work at much lower temperature in the winter than, than this one. And this is 90 means on the higher side, the higher temperature. So this is the how the name of the lubricating oil is written. So these are different applications, automobile applications, gear applications, hydraulic fluids also contain uh, the lubricating oils. And these are the viscosities, the flash point. So flash point is the temperature at which the material will ignite if given a spark or given a flame. 
pore point so pore point as we have learned lower the better so for example for aviation grade we use lower pore point so minus 23 or some synthetic hydrocarbons even lower than that minus 54 and minus 62 so these will be used for very low temperature applications specific gravity and viscosity index so viscosity index we don't have data for all but obviously they are close to 150 more than 120 for all synthetic and these are the common additives so these are the um, symbols which mean r means rust uh, inhibitor o means oxidation inhibitor so they all contain uh, some additives as well as these uh, synthetic ones also will contain additives um, to improve their performance another list um, of different within automobile oils so there are many different types of oils so um, when you buy the oil for your car then you have to see which oil you are using so for for a low temperature application like in winter in cold countries you will need higher uh, going as low as possible and um, this again the data similar data that I have just shown you and the common additives so these data will in some way help you to understand which oil should be used for any particular application